Hi, my name's Scott the Miniature Maniac, and I got this mystery Japanese juice from a viewer that might be the key to solving all of my airbrush clogging issues forever. Let's find out. What up, Mini Family? Airbrushes are wonderful tools that expedite the painting process, but are also incredibly frustrating for a number of reasons. Due to all of the tiny passages in and around an airbrush, paint often gets stuck and clogs up the works. There have been a few ways that people try to solve this. Some people oil their airbrush needle, which makes sense. Oil is hydrophobic, so it should repel water and water-based products, at least partially. Another way is by properly thinning your paint for the airbrush. The thinner the paint is, the more easily it can pass through all those small areas. Lastly, people regularly clean their airbrush during usage. These methods all work, but I'm lazy. A few months ago, a patron of mine sent me this Japanese product that was supposedly going to help me with this problem. The problem with the airbrush, not my laziness. I'm pretty sure there isn't a solution for that problem. Now, I don't know a whole lot about this product from what it is to how it works to what it's even called. And you'd think a good spot to start to figure those things out is the manual. But it's entirely in Japanese, which makes sense because it's a Japanese product. But shout out to my patron, John, for getting this all translated into English so we can figure out what it is, how it works, and what it's called. Ah uh, yes, fun coating. We'll see how fun it really is. According to the literature, this product is something of a polymer coating with hydrophobic and oleophobic properties. I definitely knew those terms meant water and oil repellent and definitely not need to look it up. You could summarize these terms by calling the coating anti-fouling, which is verbiage used in the boating industry to describe paint that goes on the hull of ships to prevent foreign bodies from attaching to them. Wow, Scott, I just want to paint miniatures. I don't care at all about boats. Okay, fine. But before we slap it on our airbrush willy-nilly, let's pretend to be scientists. Welcome to science class, brought to you by someone who is neither a scientist nor a teacher. Now, essentially what you're doing when you're covering your airbrush in this magical Japanese juice is you're covering it in monomers, which are very small molecules with low molecular mass. And in this case, they're captive in a substrate or a liquid to help them coat the airbrush evenly. Then, through a chemical reaction, which in this case is caused by the introduction of heat, they bind together, forming covalent bonds in a process called polymerization, which creates a polymer. Obviously. Now, like I said earlier, a monomer by itself is quite low in molecular mass, but a polymer is actually quite high, which causes the anti-fouling properties that I mentioned earlier. I wonder how happy my chemistry teacher is that I use the word covalent bonds in my late 20s. All right, playtime's over, let's apply this stuff. But as many of you have noticed about my airbrushes, they're quite dirty. We need to fully clean them before we can apply anything. I don't want to trap any paint under this protective coating. With a combination of isopropyl alcohol and a bunch of cleaning tools, let's give this Awada HPCS a wipe down. While I do that, let me shout out some patrons. In this week's video, we're shouting out William Hall, Justin Stevens, Aiden Sullivan, Michael Lewis, Lucas Frederickson, Emmanuel Weber, Craig Wilkie, Skylar Coyle, Martin Dubovsky, Justin TSB, Kietil Savraud, oh my god, I butchered that. HM, Jesse Martin, Joe Brackenborough, Cypher the Unforgiven, Bunny Honey, Defiant Bidet, is that like a bidet that won't clean your butthole? Tom Boaf, Raphael Wigner, Stuart Smith, Joe Magish, X Lumberjack, Daniel Lumley, Mark Gray, Jacob, Terry Osborne, Katie Keith, Ajax M, Donald Westendorp, Philip Lloyd, Justin Price, Chris Atkins, Greg Lang Jones, I Sophist, Lyra Lopez, Saho Kawajiri, Ian Poulin, Diamonos, John Allams, Zach, Parenthesis, Sleepy Badger, Parenthesis, Kyle Gress, ZT Bone One, Nathan Milfull, Hute Blaster, Michael Grover, David Tamburin, Sergei Shapovalov, Justin Burnett, and Amy Bondanella. 
You probably hear this a lot from me, but Patreon is the largest and most consistent revenue stream I have as a miniature painting content creator. And I honestly wish that I could be more thankful for the amounts and consistent support that I've gotten from my patrons. It truly blows me away that people would support me for this length of time with this amount of money. So truly from the bottom of my mini heart, thank you. If you guys wanna support me on Patreon, you can find all of the info linked in the description below. We have tons of fun rewards, one being a Discord server where we have a cool point system where you can get points for your painted stuff. You can see my videos a week early and other stuff. All things in the description below. All right, back to the video. With my airbrush all cleaned, I'm ready to go. I did the smaller parts like the needle nozzle and a cup of the coating. And for the larger parts, I used a brush to apply it, making sure I covered the entire surface of the airbrush. You can also apply this stuff with another airbrush if you wanted to. Once it was all air dried, I placed the airbrush and all of its components in an oven set to 170 degrees Fahrenheit or 80 degrees Celsius for one hour. This happened to be the lowest temperature my oven could manage. I was a little concerned that the Teflon on the needle nozzle would get messed up, but it turned out okay. I let it cool and then it was testing time. Recently, I did a three hour airbrushing challenge on my channel and I figured this was a great opportunity to test the airbrush out. Almost immediately, I noticed that the cup was acting differently. You could see the paint repelling from it, which to me was a great sign that the coating was working. Unfortunately, two times during the marathon, I got some dry tip issues. It's very likely that I might have suffered from more problems had I not applied the protective layer. The product claims that it makes cleaning the airbrush easier and I can say with confidence that it is absolutely true. At the end of my airbrushing session, this is what my cup looked like, whereas before I was getting all sorts of issues with paint drying around the top of the cup. I didn't change the way I was cleaning out my brush either. In regards to the dry tip issue, I was reminded of my cast iron pan. Cast iron pans are cool because you can season them, and I don't mean with salt and pepper. You can apply a thin film of oil to them that when heated to beyond the smoking point of that oil, creates a polymerized coating which gives the pan non-stick-like qualities. This process is very similar to what we're doing here. With cast iron pans, it's often normal to apply multiple layers of this coating, so it stands to reason that this process would have likely benefited from doing multiple coats, heating in between each one. So, did this solve all the problems that I have with airbrushes and clogging? No, absolutely not. But it definitely is a step in the right direction, and I'm looking forward to further experimenting with it in the future. Now, say you wanted to buy this stuff and use it on your airbrushes. I have no idea where you'd find it. I'll link the product website in the description below, but barring going on the dark web, it's kind of hard to find. I did a brief Google search for polymer coatings for airbrushes and found literally nothing. So if you know of a alternative solution that we can also use for airbrushes, leave it down in the description below. Perhaps ceramic coatings for car tires? That's gonna do it for this one, guys. Thanks for hanging out and allowing me to pretend to be out in brown for 30 seconds. I really appreciate it. If you guys like the channel and you wanna support it, there are a number of ways that you can do it. All things linked in the description below. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to... Yeah!